Hello guys, Simon of Travel Agent Hanoi again. One of the main reasons for doing this video is that um, in the last video, so what I did, talking about, I was talking about the e visa situation and uh, I happened to mention that Ireland weren't on this list. Incorrectly so. Now I was just talking to an Irishman in Hanoi a few days earlier, you see, and uh, he did say that uh, Irish can't get an e-visa, which I thought was incredible. I didn't even check it out for <laughs> to see if he was right or not. My mistake. I don't know the whole list of 80 countries, <laughs> but uh, I've got a I've got a list. It's on, on the actual official e-visa page, so um, the actual list of port of entry as well is on there. List of countries are able to get an e-visa into Vietnam is in there. So uh, I'll put that in the description. I have made a video of how to fill in that form and that link is uh, down there below as well. So yeah, so I just wanted to clarify that. Ireland, the Irish, you are allowed in Vietnam through the e-visa. I don't know what my mate was talking about. He just said it. He said, oh, we're not allowed in on e-visa. Never thought to check. Anyway, so I'm just going down through my village. Thought I'd take you on a different route this time. And uh, I'll film at different points to give an idea what it's like at the moment. It's been raining heavily overnight so the ponds are nice and full banana trees are nice and green everything's nice and green except the pigeons Right guys, bit of breaking news actually. Just been looking on the Vietnam Express international news site. Um, basically the Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism is seeking feedback from other ministries. I'm reading this from the news article. On scrapping the travel insurance requirement for COVID-19 treatment for foreigners entering Vietnam. This could be huge for you guys. I know there's a lot of elderly people who have mentioned how much it's going to cost. Some are saying £200 or $200 a day for COVID insurance to actually just enter Vietnam. So this is actually huge news for you guys and our target market as well. Thank you very much. So. Basically, they said the pandemic is situation is under control and there's not a need for such a high insurance amount because most people, even if they catch COVID, are not being hospitalized. They're not needing treatment. You know, it's very uh, mild symptoms. I myself have had it, my wife, and even my, she was seven months old, I think, six or seven months old, and my four-year-old son have had it. They shrugged it off in a day. Took me a little bit longer, because I'm an old git. But even then, having two vaccine shots, didn't need to be hospitalized. And so that's what they're thinking with these guys. I'll turn, turn it around so you can see actually the nice green and yellow rice fields instead of me. So yeah, basically they're saying it's no longer necessary for tourists to buy insurance of at least ten thousand dollars so that's actually huge news i mean it's already removed the re the requirement to have a negative test result to enter yeah um, i don't think they've actually officially said it but you don't even need a, 
a vaccine certificate to enter Vietnam. So literally, that means Vietnam is pre pretty much open, isn't it? No restrictions really. You can come here on your holiday and enjoy yourselves. It's gonna be a hell of a lot easier for people to book their trips through us at booking at travelagenthanoi.com. Vietnam is very much open and no restrictions. So that's absolutely amazing news, guys. If, <laughs> now these are requests, of course, for feedback from other ministries. But when it comes up like that, it usually, it usually tends to happen. More news for you Indian followers, subscribers, or who happen to just come across my video. Vietjet has become the first Vietnamese carrier to operate direct flights to India's Mumbai. So Mumbai direct, it flies four times a week from Ho Chi Minh City and three times from Hanoi. So that's pretty good news. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go down here guys, uh, they've been harvesting. So they're loading up the rice. See if we can give them a hand if they need it. <laughs> Morning's up. Oh, goes I. Heads I. Oh, there, there. Bằng mấy bao sức mình ý <laughs> come on, come on. Knackered now. Speaking of uh, flights, there's a new, a new route or a, a, a route that's restarted. And uh, again, Vietnam Airlines, not again, sorry, Vietnam Airlines have become the first Vietnamese carrier to operate a direct service connecting Nha Trang with, who do you think? Amsterdam postcard, Singapore. So on Friday, the first flight came, 160 passengers from Singapore, landed at Cam Rang or Cam Zang airport, which is outside Nha Trang. So that's uh, another plus for anyone coming from Singapore and want to go straight to the beach. I quite like this building here. I think it's been used to, to make bricks. Some kind of kiln. Actually reminds me of Cham. <laughs> Cham Ruins. Obviously not uh, as old as Cham Ruins, but... Okay, so I'm gonna tell you about a little bit what I'm gonna be doing. Actually this weekend, we're going to Chang An. Now a lot of you know and I've been doing some filming in Tam Kok, which is in the Ninh Binh province. A couple of years ago, was it a year ago, I can't remember now, I did film Hang Mua. Did that well before these new vloggers have come in. All these couples that keep stepping on my territory. I don't know. I think I got about 67 views in two years. Obviously a great video. But uh, I enjoyed doing it. They get 60,000 views in a day. Because they're a nice, happy, smiley couple. <laughs> I'm not bitter, honestly. <laughs> Main reason for the channel is to try and get the, uh, the name Travel Agent Hanoi up there all the time. 
so that we get a lion's share of the business coming through to Vietnam. It'd be nice if I got a few more views, obviously. But there we go. So yes, uh, don't been doing Tam Cock. I I did it as I said a year or two ago. I actually went to on a Chang'an boat ride. I did a Tam Cock boat ride. I did Biding Pagoda. Went up the the Super. I think it is a Super. Chupa, something like that. Basically the nice tall building that you can get amazing views over by Ding. It's unbelievable. Check that video out. All the videos are in the description. Please do have a look at them guys. Not many of you have seen them. But I spent a bit of time doing them. And so hopefully you guys can get to see it now a couple of years on. So yeah, Tamcock was pretty much hammered. Especially this week, this last month. Last, last month, May, when I went and did uh, cycle rides and walkabouts. But on Saturday, me and my lovely wife, Nat, and my two kids are going to go to Chang'an for a few nights. We had a good couple of, couple of months to start our business after the pandemic, so we're quite happy with that. We obviously want to be building on that. So... Yeah, please do contact us guys if you've got a trip to uh, Hanoi, Ho Chi Minh, Da Nang, Hue, anywhere in Vietnam, especially Ninh Binh, it's my favourite place. So, yes, we'll be there for a few nights and we were staying in a, go a gorgeous place, absolutely gorgeous. Bet you can't wait to see that. Oh yeah. And uh, we're going to be taking... Obviously going to be uh, checking out some of the local food as well. Maybe get some more goat downers. Nat wants some goat. I want to try a couple of specialities with eels. So that's going to be interesting. <laughs> and uh, I'll probably do a boat ride with my son. Uh, maybe wi my wife Nat and uh, Leah will come along. Depends on the weather. Might be a long trip for... For a 10 month old baby so we'll see how that goes yes yeah, so that's that's my plan for the weekend i think this is a beautiful spot i've actually seen kids sat here having picnics next to this it's not exactly ideal especially if it's rained but it's a beautiful area So back to some news and in Hue, uh, the government have set up a new project with uh, shared public bicycles. So tourists can come, pick them up, and drop them off at various locations around the city. And it's uh, another step towards in environmentally changing how Vietnam looks and acts and it's something that uh, has happened, started in Ho Chi Minh I haven't seen it in Hanoi yet but uh, who knows it may happen see how that goes I'm actually going to be going into Hanoi one day and I'm going to get the bicycle out I'm going to do a bicycle ride around certain areas that you haven't seen like French Quarter and uh, down Hai Ba Chung go around the lakes some beautiful lakes in Hanoi so that's something I want to do so do stay subscribed or subscribe if you haven't already and you get to see some great stuff in between me writing itineraries of course as I say we've been pretty busy the first couple of months we had a two week sort of lull in May <coughs> but it went a little bit quiet but it went bounce back again and plenty of inquiries coming in from America and I'm getting quite a lot of inquiries about visa letters guys honestly I don't know what's going on with the embassies <coughs> they obviously haven't got the memo we're speaking to our Vietnamese partner and there's no Vietnam 
visa approval letters, no pre-approval letters, no visa on arrival or anything like that to allow you entry into Vietnam. But I've been getting numerous emails from all over the world, from countries that are not on the visa list, some that are on the visa list. And uh, they're confused because they've been told that they need to speak to a travel agent to get one of these approval letters. <laughs> it's a bit of a battle there. I think that's the monk. There you go. Come through the gate. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I hate the dogs in Vietnam. She's oi oi. Yeah. Hate them. Only really little buggers. But they could nip you. Just ooh, you bugger. So, <laughs> I had a bloody big dog growl at me and Wilming this morning when we went for a bike ride. Honestly, I had enough of that. But anyway, back to the back to the news. Yeah, the visas. People have been told by their embassies all over the world that a travel agency can offer them an approval letter. Now. I'm going to double check again today because, you know, as I said to you in the last video, things change daily, weekly. That's why we don't deal with visas. And please, guys, don't send us your inquiries for visas. We just will not bother. We don't want to do it. We'll give you a great trip once you arrive and step foot outside that airport in Hanoi or Ho Chi Minh or Da Nang or wherever. And we'll look after you all the way through to the end. When you step out of that car and into the airport, we look after you all that way. But visas, guys, no thanks. And, you know, plenty of people think that uh, visa agents make a hell of a lot of money. Well, I can guarantee you that it may say $10 on the stamp for the uh, visa extension that you probably got three, four years ago. And, char and we may have charged you $2.90 when we did do visas. But I'm telling you now, guys, the cost to us was about 280. We made $10. And if anything goes wrong with that visa, that $10 can turn into a whopping $300, $400 mistake. I know. <laughs> there are companies out there that are offering visas. I bumped into those two Israeli couple, uh, the Israeli couple, and they got in and they're not on the e-visa list so there are people who do it but i can't recommend it because it may be a fake one so things like that do happen so yeah be wary guys right guys i'll continue my walk but that's it for now hope you enjoyed the news bits what i'm going to be doing soon and especially Possibly no more insurance, so uh, do stay tuned in for more on that when it becomes official. Looking forward to you sending us an email at booking at travelagenthanoi.com. Alright, I'll continue my walk and go and have my lunch. Cheers, ears.